Hi guys, so I was asked to create a lacquer material and show you how to do this, so that's what I've done here, and I'm just going to walk through this quickly. Uh, it's very simple to create a lacquer, um, and I'll show you a couple of tips and tricks to add some extra detail in there. So first off, what we're going to do is just take the object, and this is the white lacquer material I've already created, so I'm just going to double click here on this, and then click select by material, and this will select all of the items with this on. If it's in a group, make sure your group is open before you do that. Then I'll press Alt-Q to make sure I've got these selected. And then I'm going to come out of this just to press Control z to come out of that. And the reason I'm doing this is I'm just creating a new V-Ray material. Just double-click here on Materials, V-Ray. And to bring up your material editor, you can just click up here. So we've got this. I'm just going to double-click here, click on those two. Just so I'd like to see more clearly what's happening with my material. And then here, just use this little button here to assign this to select to the selection. Now remember, V-Ray doesn't like it when you go to absolute, so really try not to take this white all the way over there. You can just come back a bit. 235 should be fine. We'll go with that. Click OK. And then you can take your reflection, push that all the way up, and leave your glossiness at 1. And by default, that's really it. I press F9 now. Um, that's basic lacquer. If I'm in a rush, I'll do that, I'll put that on an object, and I know I'm done, and everything's good. Now, I want, would like to add in some extra details here, so what I'm going to do is just take a noise map. And we're going to go Maps, General, Noise, right here. Double-click, bring that in, and put that straight onto the bump. And you'll see all of this coming through. And the reason for that is because by default, the bump, if you look, is at 30. Now, we're going to take this and I'm going to bring down the highs a bit. I'll bring those down to about 0.8. And I'll push the lows up to about 0.4. And you can see the effect this has here. I like to see what's happening here. So let's chuck that over into the diffuse. And we're going to click F9 and just do a quick render just so we can see how big that noise map is. And you can clearly see this map is too big here. There's another error with that as well, but let's get the scale right first. So if we try 300 here on the scale, and then render, we can see that's looking about right. Now what's wrong here is that these doors are instances. So rather than the noise going across the whole thing, it's exactly the same, just flipped. So, from it being object XYZ, we're going to go world XYZ. And then we're going to do another test render. And there you see now you've got it based on the world unit. So if you took this now and moved it, you'd have to be careful, because if you took this and moved it, um, the noise map would move. So if you were animating the doors, it would be a bit odd that the noise map was moving. Let's try, push this up back up 0.9. Oops. And the low, push it down to 0.3. And let's see what happens here. Yeah, that's more reasonable. We can see stuff still happening, but it's not so exaggerated. So now what I'll do is I'll move that down to the bump. Now I know what's going on. And this bump, I better not leave it at 30, because if I do, I'm going to wind up with something which looks like it's got pits in it and it's just falling apart here. Yeah. So even one or two or three I find can be too much, so often I'll go down to about 0.5. And if I render this out now, I'm just going to stop that, save that out, and take that bump off. I'll stop that. Save that. I'm going to turn off in the render settings, different render elements. Just go render elements, turn that off. So here you can see the effect of the noise. You see how this reflection changes, this reflection changes, this reflection changes here. How that one there changes slightly. So it's just slight, but it brings in that change. And that's what we're going for, just really a slight variation. Now, 
Bearing that in mind, we put that into the bump. It's this dirt map here, and it's got all sorts of stuff going on. Fingerprints and just general bits of dirt and, and grunge and stuff like that. We'll take this map, and what we're going to do here is we're going to put this straight into the reflection glossiness slot. And again, if I render now, you can clearly see here and here, there's just too much detail going on. And we don't want it really to stop being glossy and can be completely matte in these areas. So what we want to do is instead of having that going straight in there and being, you know, 100%, we just drop this down. And I find that if you, I drop it down to 10% and then render, I'll still get the details there, but they'll be very, very subtle. If you look here, you see around here, you've got some detail going on. The reflective glossiness is there, but only slightly. And you can look at the other areas here and you'll just see very slight marks in the surface. And they just add to the realism and make it look better without being over the top. So your eye gets tricked into believing it's correct. Um, and that's really what it's all about. It's about, does it look right to your eye? I often find with CG artists, they like to add a lot of extra detail into an image, often too much detail. So you end up with all kinds of grunge and dirt and stuff going on, which should never be there in the first place. So really that's all there is to it. That's creating the white uh, lacquer material. Now, black lacquer is, is very similar. I made something just slightly different here. So again, V-Ray, V-Ray material. And over here, I'll just press F4 so I can see what's white. I'm just going to press Control and select this back one. And let's assign that to it. And then press F4 so we go back there. Now, again, we don't want to take this to absolutes. So we'll take this down to 7. And click OK. And then what we want to do is we want that same bump. So I'm just going to grab that, put that straight into the bump, and take my bump here and again lower that down to 0.5. And feel free to adjust these settings and see what it does for you. It's just that's what I find works really well for me. And this here is the same, the same map. And what I've done here is take this reflection, push that again all the way up. If you want this reflection, if you want it to be more reflective, what you need to do is you need to, you know, unlock it here and you can push that up. That's the simple thing of doing, simple way of doing it. Now, don't think that you have to, you know, if you're here and playing around, if you lock this again, it that number doesn't change, but it goes straight back to 1.6. So, glossiness. I wanted a more matte uh, material, so that's just going to blur those glossiness, the, the, the sharpness of the reflection here. So 0.8, and that just blurs it out there. So if we look at our render window and render this off, you know, that's what you get. As opposed to if this glossiness was at 1, like it was for the white, you know, I'm going to get all of this going on. These jagged edges are caused by the bump and so on and so forth. But I'm not doing it to get make because it looks weird here. I mean, it doesn't entirely look weird. You've got the white, uh, you know, you've got the white cabinet being reflected here. And here you've got the environment being reflected. But I'm lowering it to 0.8 just so you can see a different type of lacquer. Okay. Um, and then I've got the same map here. And this time, instead of putting it into the reflective glossiness, I put it into the reflective slot here. And so if I render this out, you'll start seeing you get these dark marks where it's not reflecting at all. It looks very, here you get all these scratches, so you're running through the, the cabinet. And the reason for that is just the reflective glossiness is saying, Sorry, the reflection slot is just saying don't reflect anything in this area where it's black. And we don't, like I say, we don't really want that. So we go to the maps and again, lower that down to 10%.
And the only other thing I would say is make sure that this map is mapped correctly or whatever you're using. So let's say you double click on here and then you just make sure show shaded material and viewport. And you can just click on the material there and then you can see it's mapped properly. And this I set to five meters by five meters because I thought it looked pretty good. Um, but feel free to take your dirt map and set it to whatever you like. And then make sure you've got your object selected and just put a UVW on it and then say box and if you look at my material here you'll see that I've turned on real world scale and I put the size in here so over here what you want to be doing is put box and real world scale and then it's going to pop up and again for the black it's the same thing you click here, double click on this, show shaded material and viewport, show on here and you can see on the black one and just make sure that's mapped properly as well. So that's it, that's how I make lacquer. Uh, it's very very simple, you just whack up that reflection, whack up that reflective glossiness and then just make slight adjust it, adjustments depending on what you feel is needed. Now one thing which I, I didn't show you here on this is I did actually have some reference materials and it's always a good idea to look at these when you're working. So here you've got white lacquer and you can see you know how reflective that is. You can see the perfect reflections here of the, the object over here and you can see it's very very glossy. So that's that one. This one's glossy as well. You can see cabinets and items and walls around here. This one, this one here looks less glossy. This looks kind of blurry there. That's again super glossy lacquer. But here again, this one's less glossy, and this is what we did with the second cabinet. We wanted to make it so it didn't have these perfectly sharp reflections. So those were the two different types of gloss that we created. Different types. Those were the two different types of lacquer we created: white, very reflective, and black, less reflective. Okay. So I hope this is useful. Please click on that subscribe button. That helps me along making these videos and we'll get some more made showing you some tips and tricks on how to make something which looks realistic.